Hi guys. So today we're going to talk about um, terminology related to fractures and how we can reduce the confusion. If you already know some fracture terminology, you can see the humor there. Um, we're going to talk about reductions here in a second, but yes, we want to make the confusion less. So let's start off with what is a fracture? A fracture is a break in the bone and it requires a long healing process. Like the healing of a fracture can take, usually takes weeks to months to heal depending on the level of the um, fracture and things like that. Um, but along the way, many times to heal a fracture, you know, there's braces, devices, immobilization that needs to happen, possible surgery, um, and then a lot of other treatments with a lot of confusing names, which is why I made this PowerPoint. So let's first start by talking about types of fractures. So there's two types of fractures. There's a closed fracture like this one here at the bottom. It's closed because the skin is not broken. It's very obvious there's, there's a break there. There's something not working there, um, but the skin is closed. There's no break. Whereas an open fracture is open where you can actually see the bone. I can see bone, skin is open. Um, so there's obviously an issue there where, um, you know, we're going to be concerned about the patient's uh, risk of infection and that fracture is obviously going to need some sort of surgery. So first we're just talking about types. Is it closed? Skin is closed or is it open? The skin is open. There's also what's called reduction. And when I'm reducing something, I'm trying to make it smaller. So I'm trying to, um, you know, pretty much reduce the fracture uh, or, you know, when I, when we're talking about reduction, not me as the nurse, but um, the doctor is trying to get the bone back in the place that it's supposed to be. And so there's both closed and open reductions as well. And so this is like the procedure that they're doing in order to get the bone back in the place. So there's what's called a closed reduction. This is where the doctor goes in and they push on the bones, they pull on them, they manipulate them um, in order to get them back into place. They can apply, after they're done doing that kind of bending, moving, shifting back into place, they can apply traction or counter traction, cast splints, braces. So you know, if you've ever broken your arm, they might have come in and kind of felt and like push some things back into place and then put a cast on. That's a closed reduction. On the other hand, you know, sometimes they're, what they're going to want to do is to go in at the bone itself and put a device like screws, plates, et cetera, onto the bone itself to put it in, keep it in place. So that manipulation isn't enough. Um, and so for that, they're going to do a surgical repair. And that's what's called an open reduction. Um, they do usually do what's called an open reduction internal fixation. So they open it um, and then fixate it um, with um, some sort of pin, screws, plates, et cetera. Um, the thing to keep in mind with an open reduction is that there's higher risk for infection because we are opening the skin, going in in order to immobilize and stabilize that fracture. So then there's also fixation and fixation, at least they all have two things. So, you know, there's internal and external fixation. So an internal fixation is a lot of what we just talked about, like where the doctor is going to go in and they're going to put like plates, um, wires, screws, pins, rods, you know, whatever that they need um, to in that bone to keep it into place. Because the reason we need it in place is we need it to be in place so that it can heal most effectively and heal faster. Um, so for an internal fixation, I can't see it. I might have the incision obviously down on my leg where they've cut in, but I cannot actually see the fixator itself, it's inside my bone, in my body. So that's keeping my bone stable. There's also what's called external fixators. And these are usually used when there's like a whole lot of um, like pieces and things to my fracture. This is to keep things in place outside and it actually goes outside and inside. So, but there's something outside the body that you can see that's keeping it in place. So you can see here, like in this patient, there's these pins that are actually going into the bone and holding things in place inside, but there's also this outside fixture that's going to help to um, keep it in place. So this is something, an external fixator is something you can see on the outside. It's a device on the outside where an internal fixator is a device on the inside. Um, and so they pretty much keep the bone stable. And if you're wondering like, well, do, am I gonna need to know if the patient needs one versus the other? No, that's up to the doctor. It depends on the type of fracture that they have. So last but not least, there's also types of traction. Um, and so there's what's called skin traction and skeletal traction. So what skin traction, it's outside the body, um, on the skin. It's literally something attached to the skin. It's usually like a boot or a wrap or something like that. And then there's weights attached to it, like this top picture. And this is what we call usually Buck's traction. But of course, there's something rubbing on the skin. So my biggest concern is going to be skin breakdown. 
There's also what's called skeletal traction. This is where there's actually pins or wires inside the bone, kind of like, remember that external fixator we were just looking at? You can have skeletal traction attached to that. Um, but effectively what happens, there's pins or wires, they're attached to a device that's going to, again, just like this upper picture, it's gonna have weights attached. But the difference is, is there's actually a pin or wire in the bone with the weights attached. And that's what's called balance suspension traction. And our biggest concern for that one's gonna be infection. Cause anytime we create a hole or an opening that leads where bacteria can get from the outside in, inside your body, there's always gonna be a higher risk of infection. So, um, you know, effectively both of these tractions are going to help with um, stabilizing, decreasing pain and spasm and um, helping to realign the bones. Um, so at the end of the day, again, you don't need to know whether a patient needs one versus the other, but you didn't know as the nurse, if I have a patient and they have this, what are my biggest concerns? So that is, um, that's your focus. How are you going to manage this? What are you going to, what assessments are you going to be doing for a patient with these different devices? So that kind of just simply breaks down the um, different types of um, skin and skeletal traction and the, all the terminologies, the reductions, the fixations, the types of fractures, hopefully makes a little simpler for you so that you can kind of help visualize those in your head. Remember, just always be focused on the role of the nurse in these situations, not getting too in depth about, uh, you know, why a patient would need one versus the other versus why uh, once the patient has them, what is your concern as the nurse? What are you going to be doing? So I hope this helped. See you next time.